Welcome back to the Real Cup Tries podcast where we overanalyze all things Bravo. So we're a few episodes into Southern Charm season nine and the main storyline is really about Austin and Taylor who may or may not have hooked up and then lied to everyone about it throughout the season, ultimately betraying two of their best friends. Two of their best friends who are also technically each other's exes. It's like very complicated. Yeah, it's a weird love square (laughs) and it's definitely giving scandal of all 2.0 in a lot of ways yeah it feels like we've seen this story before (laughs) (laughs) so we're going to actually compare and contrast the scandal from vpr with this new southern charm scandal that doesn't have a name (laughs) (laughs) it would be way too complicated to explain anyway so it's perfect but before we get into it we really wanted to say a special thank you to everybody who has subscribed we finally reached our goal of a thousand i say finally but like we can't believe that it happened so quickly uh just under a year so thank you thank you thank you so much for helping us get there and helping us achieve that and you know whether you were here since the beginning or during the scandal times or now maybe you're coming in during the southern charm time so thank you thank you so much yes and to celebrate this momentous occasion we are giving you more couch wives in more ways so we are having all of our episodes gonna be coming out on spotify so you know if you want to listen to it in the car on the bus And we also have a Clips channel that has launched, which is going to feature like shorter segments of the best parts of each podcast. So definitely let us know if you want to even make your own clips. Let us know which parts you think should be a clip. Uh, And we have some other things up our sleeve. So definitely stick around. Thank you so, so much. Iris feels like just yesterday that we were just calling each other multiple times a day to talk about (laughs) Bravo and the Housewives. Yeah, I know. I can't believe that like we just, you know, we used to just do this like normally on our own little Zoom calls. And now we're just doing it here on YouTube uh, in front of human beings who with all of you may or may not enjoy our opinions. (laughs) (laughs) Which is fair, which is fair, you know. Uh, Yes, huge thank you. (laughs) And on to the show. Get into (laughs) it. (laughs) So obviously, you know, this is a big thing that is happening in the Southern Charm world right now with this uh, little Austin and Taylor liaison that may or may not have happened. Um, And as I'm sure many of you remember, this actually broke a long, long, long time ago when they were initially filming back in February. Um, but it was unfortunately, you know, the news did break technically. We did find out about this ahead of time, but it was just quickly swallowed up by Scandaval. Scandaval really, it, it took the nation by storm, quite frankly, right? Like little old Southern charm never stood a chance. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I think Craig actually in an interview was like, this news of like Austin and Taylor broke while we were filming Mm -hmm. but then like Scandaval came out first and then they were able to pick back up cameras before Southern Charm aired yeah he's like so now it looks like we're copying them (laughs) but it actually happened first they they were just (laughs) happening at the same time unfortunately yeah I do remember hearing about it but yeah we were just like so engulfed by like Scandaval that I just like I don't even think I like paid it like a second yeah real thought really <laughs> yeah really and and that's just it like it's interesting because I almost kind of now that I'm seeing both of them play out I kind of wonder if Southern Charm is a little bit more of a big deal like I don't know oh. do, how do you feel about it yeah I mean there's definitely different friendship dynamics at play here right like there's more people involved I feel like there's some really deep rooted friendship betrayals more yeah. so than like relationship betrayals I guess mm-hmm. which is what like we had in in um in in Vanderpump Rules yeah. I also feel like we were more just like invested in Vanderpump Rules there mm-hmm. was like a clear villain and a clear victim and I feel like the yes. waters are a lot more murky here yes yeah maybe that's just it maybe it's just that it's a little bit more complicated it's a little bit more complex I also think it's very interesting how Mr. Shepard Rose is a little bit painting himself as a victim in all of this yeah (laughs) yeah which we'll get into later I'm sure yeah Um, so let's start with the similarities because there's actually quite a few right and like we're only in what episode three four four four, I think I think fourth the fourth one just came out so Mm -hmm. yeah yeah I think the first ones that like 
I feel the most struck by are definitely the similarities between how Raquel was kind of portraying herself at the beginning of season mm. 10 of VPR and the way that Taylor is kind of portraying herself at the beginning of this season. Um, you know, obviously they were both kind of like coming out of their relationships. This was their first season being single cast members on the show. And, uh, you know, for both of them, it really has not worked out. <laughs> um, <laughs> not going in good directions so far maybe T taylor has a chance taylor has time to redeem herself uh though based on the uh watch what happens live appearance of olivia and shep last night uh it definitely doesn't feel like there's actually been any reconciliation between taylor and olivia unfortunately no no i don't think that there was and actually i just realized too and we should probably for those who who aren't aware of both of the situations kind mm. of, oh that's a good like, idea <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> just let everyone know yeah. if you're not as well versed in in everything bravo <laughs> which is totally fair um yeah. So I think we are all quite familiar with the Scandoval, right? Which is where there's Ariana Maddox and Tom Sandoval who are in a relationship for, you know, nine years. And then it comes out as they're filming or as we're watching a season mm -hmm. that just filmed come out and air, we see that Tom was actually cheating on Ariana with her best friend, uh, who is formerly known as Raquel <laughs> Levis and is now Rachel Levis. <laughs> yeah um, totally normal <laughs> <laughs> and then in southern charm it's actually a lot harder to <laughs> explain <laughs> as you were saying iris <laughs> so we have um shep who has been on the show for you know nine years since its mm -hmm. inception he was dating uh taylor they were dating for what like two and a half years like they started so. dating during um, covid during covid yeah um they break up uh due to some indiscretions like he uh was not faithful to her that we learned it was super messy mm -hmm. um we saw it kind of play out at the end of last season yeah then shep's best friend austin um and taylor's best friend olivia but newer best friends yeah the, the girls yeah um they date kind yes. of yeah. Um, <laughs> um, more so off the show, it seems like on the show, yeah. like their their romance was a little bit more like playful and light. But apparently, they they did date um, yeah. seriously, and it comes out during Scandal, as Iris was saying, that essentially uh, Austin and oh my god, there's too many names. <laughs> Austin and Taylor had hooked up. Yes, they're thus betraying both of their friends, as yeah. as Iris was saying earlier. And their I exes. Think that sets it. And their exes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's a big weird love. It is square. it is very much like a weird little love square. Um and and I just yeah, that's just it. It's just so complicated because Shep obviously has his history with Taylor. Shep has his his history with Austin. Austin. He doesn't really have his history with Olivia because she like last season was her first season. But they're um, also but neighbors, just to like add. That is true, and they are <laughs> friends. They see yeah. they seem they seem to be getting along. Uh, and then Taylor obviously has her own relationship that she had with like Austin when she was in the relationship with Shep. She has her relationship with Shep like pre post and like I guess from during their like relationship actual their like situationship mm -hmm. um and now she's kind of like recovering from you know having broken up with Shep and like the experience of what that was like and the you know the own the, the her own situation of uh I don't want to say trauma because I feel like that's like too traumatic it's like too dramatic um but I'm sure that there's like it feels like there's a lot that she's like dealing with in general post this breakup yeah like, I mean speaking of a similarity like she was treated quite poorly by Shep at, at many times in her relationship, like mm -hmm. similarly to Raquel um, and James, yeah. right? Who who yes she had before. And like, yeah. I feel like they both invested a lot in these relationships and like maybe even to a certain extent could have lost themselves a little bit in these mm -hmm. relationships. And like, they definitely came out feeling lost mm -hmm. and vulnerable. Yes. And I feel yeah. like you see that playing out on both. Yeah, I think, I think you're really right. Like the, the, breakup of the engagement between Rachel and James like literally like it played out on on camera for the season nine reunion um and then interestingly like I guess the breakup of Ta uh, like even though the breakup of Taylor and Shep had already happened I think a lot of the tr like processing it actually also happened live on the reunion of season was that season eight last year um so it's interesting how we it's been like very public these like breakups that they've had mm -hmm. and now they're also kind of like dealing with the repercussions and like even though like Raquel and James were actually engaged 
and Taylor and Shep technically weren't engaged. I think Taylor very much thought that this was like going to be her like life partner. And this was something that she was going to settle down with. And I think she was ready to do that. And I think that he was obviously very much not ready to do that. He had no intention of settling down. For sure. Well, she like quit her job to, you know, travel the world with him, which we're now kind of seeing the repercussions of. Yes. (laughs) Because she's not a good salesman. (laughs) Yeah. um, Needs needs to work on her pitch skills, unfortunately. (laughs) uh, Oh, gosh, that was brutal. (laughs) It was was a little painful to watch. It was a little hard to watch. (laughs) Yeah, no, uh, that's a good point. Like the 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 re- we did see these kind of like end of relationships on both of the reunions. They also both kind of came onto the show as mm-hmm. the significant other of uh, yeah. a male on the show who had been yeah. there for a longer amount yeah. of time, right? An established cast member who's a total party boy and probably a little bit like overindulges in, you know, alcohol and whatnot and partying and girls and whatnot like all that stuff that comes along with being on a reality tv show um and they just didn't really want to change that behavior that much um no yeah Yeah. and and the 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 difference too though is i think taylor was probably more not probably i'm I'm willing to bet was a lot more well liked i think than raquel was Mm, on her season i think so like yeah. Taylor had a really strong first season when she came was she on one or two seasons before I think she, the she, breakup she like kind of like came in on season seven but she was kind of like part-timey like I think she was pretty like a minimal character but we were like first meeting her um because at that point in their, their relationship as well they hadn't settled down and then it was really because of COVID that they did kind of like rush into like being like a committed kind of monogamous relationship and then season mm-hmm. eight was like her first like full-time cast membership which is interesting too because that like season nine for VPR was I think that was technically Raquel's first season as a full-time cast member as well oh. so that's kind of weird how that those are also very similar little dynamics happening yeah well you show. know what else is is similar too is like there was also just such a big age gap right like mm. Taylor I think is in her late 20s maybe yeah. she's 30 now she feels um, like younger than that honestly she and so does Raquel so right does like Raquel. both there of these girls are in their late 20s but they do feel a little bit younger than that like experience wise yeah and then they're you know Raquel with um Tom Sandoval who is like Mm -hmm. 10 years older than her and Mm -hmm. Shep is like 10 years older yeah or more more than than, uh, maybe even more yeah I think he's in his 40s now yeah yeah Yeah. you're right because he was like in his mid 30s I think yeah. when the show started <laughs> yes yeah he was like 35 or something and he he never thought that he could ever be Thomas Ravenel and now he's like not that far <laughs> away from being Thomas Ravenel <laughs> it's yeah. not as bad as Thomas Ravenel I think he's definitely a better person than Thomas Ravenel but yeah <laughs> actually something that sticks out to me as a similarity less in like the way that it happened but definitely more about Bravo taking notes of the reception (laughs) of Mm -hmm. Scandaval is the cold open for the first episode of Southern Charm where it starts Mm. with uh like Taylor Craig Shep basically like the producers asking their thoughts like on if this hookup had happened and then you flash all of the news articles coming out saying that this happened which is how I think they ended up also editing like the the, 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 the picking back up the cameras yeah. of VPR. Oh man. Yeah, I think that that's that sounds about right. It's it's I can't feel like I can't I can't believe that I don't remember that. But yeah. I actually it, just went back and rewatched it. Oh, that was so smart. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That feels like that was a million years ago. And we're for sure gonna see that on Beverly Hills too, because I'm like, yeah. I do worry that Bravo is now like, oh, this is a formula. This is a like, great formula. <laughs> Let's keep on having more people cheat on each other. <laughs> but like, uh, but it's just gonna seem more disingenuous, you know? It is, and it's not like it, the the whole thing about Scandaval and why it was so shocking was because it just felt like it like had never happened before, right? Like this was the first person to ever cheat on somebody <laughs> like like that. Like it felt like it was okay, that massive, Bethany right? Frankel. <laughs> <laughs> No Ouch. one's ever cheated before. No one's ever said it. Well, I'm no, I, I wasn't being sarcastic. I was being, it, it legitimately felt like no other like cheating scandal had ever happened before. It was so massive. No, um, it was. It was, it was so was, all-consuming. It was insane. And and we also just like were so bought into this couple. Yeah. Which I don't think we are as much in, in everyone involved in this, which we'll get to when we talk mm. about some of the, you know, differences. Yeah. Well, that does make me think about one of the other similarities that we've seen between these dynamics with Scandaval and with Southern Charm is that like 
now a little bit after the fact it feels like taylor's kind of downplaying the relationship between uh, olivia and austin yeah, uh, which even is in her oh, confessionals yeah which is like a weird thing to do with like your best friend or somebody who was becoming your best friend right like maybe they hadn't known each other that long but they definitely felt like they were bonding quite intensely um having had like they're both like their full, first full-time cast memberships last year yeah so it's very unfortunate to see that kind of like that dynamic playing out again um and how this like friendship just hasn't lasted basically yeah, I, I noticed that too. And I feel like that's what makes me feel like disappointed in Taylor mm-hmm. is that, you know, when she's and they haven't really been caught yet. So as of yeah. now, we know that they had a conversation that mm-hmm. maybe they should date, which feels like kind of worse than a hookup, to be honest. Like that's <laughs> like <laughs> that's like an emotional closeness, yes. you know? Yeah. Um, they like talk to their families about it apparently. Yeah. Um Yeah. And, and I yeah, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, I was just saying, like, when they're confronted with this, I feel like Taylor just goes into, like, defense mode, and she's like, you know, we Mm -hmm. did nothing wrong, Mm -hmm. like, when she's on the phone with Austin being like, we didn't do anything, like, like, this is, we're within our rights, Yeah, Um, we were broken up, Um, but then in her confessional, yeah, she's like, you know, like, were they even in a relationship? Like, I don't even know, and it's like, that's so so rude, and it's like, that's in a confessional, so that's happening, like, after the fact. Yeah, it's been, it's been a little while, you've had some time to think about it, you're not as heated as you probably would be in the moment, so it's a little bit harder to, to forgive, well, and that's just it, like, I feel a little bit bad for um Olivia in the situation because obviously the the go-to is going to be that Olivia and uh Austin's relationship like wasn't really real or it wasn't really a big deal but I think from what we saw on uh Austin's performance with uh Sierra and Lindsay a couple summer houses ago I think it's very clear that even if a relationship isn't real there can still be a lot of like mind games and like things that can happen And like stupid things that guys can do that really mess with your head. So even if Olivia and Austin weren't in like a full fledged like relationship, you know, he was still messing with her head a little bit. Like, yeah, I believe that for sure. And like, and I feel like so many people have been in that too, where like, just because there's not a label on it doesn't mean that like, if it ends, you can't be upset. And I feel like people write that off a lot. And that's really unfair. But even further, like, I do understand that perception because like, yeah, on the show, like it, it did always seem pretty casual. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, you know, as you know, we love Reality Bites on this podcast. <laughs> um, and they like one of the the women is an executive producer actually on the show. And she was saying that like they did actually get really close and they mm. dated more off camera. Um, and the same for Olivia and Taylor, like they both came into this season mm-hmm. kind of like new and they really did yeah. form like a true friendship. So, yeah. you know, not to say not everything that you see on TV or as Craig right. says, trust everything you read on the internet all the time. <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Never been anything wrong put on there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and I think that the way that um, Olivia explained it, because I, I do, I will admit that when I first saw the kind of sit down between Taylor and Olivia at the coffee shop, I was like, well, I don't know. I can give kind of Taylor the benefit of the doubt. Um, but having heard Olivia's kind of take on it now of like, I went back to L.A., um you know we thought that we were maybe gonna pursue a relationship and then he like a week later was saying like oh never mind I need to think about it and like you're kind of like if you're then kind of like oh my god is that the exact same time when he was talking to Taylor and like potentially he was had told me that we were maybe going to be in a relationship and then he went and told her that they were going to maybe be in a relationship and I was just kind of like hanging out in LA waiting for him to make this decision about my life like I don't know I you feel for her too because like that's obviously like when those kind of like little pit parts of the puzzle like start to fit together um yeah. you're kind of like seeing things a little bit more clearly and it's it's very hurtful and they have called each other kind of like their best friend like I do believe they had like a really good friendship um mm-hmm. Olivia and Taylor and it's just yeah. that like you know the fact that like Taylor I think it's a lot the deception and yeah and like the lying yeah. Um, you know, which is like similar to Scandal, right? Like they mm-hmm. just to everyone's face said like nothing happened. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. she swore in her life, she swore on the Bible. Um, and she's like very <laughs> oh, religious. So that was, yeah, that was a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, I guess it depends on like what your definition of what happened is like worth. I don't know, right? Like well, that's just it. Like, and you see, um, 
you know, in the preview for next week, where I think when this uh, most recent episode ends, Austin mm-hmm. was like, when Shep's like, did anything happen? Yeah. Or like, <sighs> did you hook up? And he's like, define hook up. Like, Austin yeah. is Ooh. so bad. He's making this so much worse. He's himself. literally the worst person to hook up with because he's just a horror. <laughs> like, he's such a bad liar. Come on. <laughs> I feel like everyone keeps blowing up their lives over yeah. Austin. <laughs> <laughs> Well, and I do just on that point, I do think it's interesting that Shep is because I as I said previously, Shep Luna was playing a little bit of the victim now, um, as if like he's, you know, hurt in all of this, as if he wasn't the one cheating towards the end of their relationship. Well, uh, he wasn't on Raya. He wasn't like pursuing girls drunkenly in, you know, bars in Southern in Charleston. Um, he, he's uh, oh, God, what was it? He was saying. Oh, yeah, he was saying the whole thing about how. Austin had pursued Chelsea and it's just like oof this is again revisionist history which is something that we always have <laughs> oh to call God, out yeah, right yeah. because that yeah. is total revisionist history with this like uh, you know Chelsea was just not interested in you dude like just you know take it right like Chelsea wasn't gonna date you and you're a little bit butt hurt about the fact that she chose Austin over you and like oh my God. don't that pretend so crazy. that you and Chelsea were gonna have some amazing love story and that I you know. were even that interested in Chelsea right like ugh. Also, on. on that point, actually, it made <laughs> yeah. me so angry when Aust- uh, when Shep was talking about Austin and he's like, oh, like he just want like he wants everyone else's toys. Like he's a kid right. in a sandbox and like, you know, you don't want another toy. You want my toy. And like, right. oh, wow. like stop referring to women as toys. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, it's just like, oh. believe it or not, that's really insensitive, dude. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, we're my not gosh. into it. I wonder yeah. if this is why you're 40 something and single. Like, come on. Yeah, no, his woe is me. I mean, also, that's kind of like Sandoval, right? Being like, yes. putting oh, his yes. little like bread cl- breadcrumb trail of like, yeah. Ariana's horrible. And this is where yeah. I cheated on her. Yeah, like, obviously different circumstances. But you also see Shep just being like, yeah, you know, so distraught that this <laughs> has happened. And it's just like, Oh, it's hard to feel bad for you, dude. <laughs> it's really hard to feel bad for you. But also talking about horrible liars, <laughs> like Sandoval is also a horrible liar, <laughs> just like Austin is That's a horrible true. liar. So there's a lot of really bad liars here. We're very good at like being able to suss out the fact that you guys are not being honest. Uh, so don't yeah. even try. <laughs> and also, you know, dovetailing off of male misogyny <laughs> <laughs> is... um. Another similarity is just the women taking the brunt of of this scandal yes. a lot more than the men, right? And oh yeah, a lot of that is because people expect it from the men. Like mm-hmm. you know, with Scandal, yeah. it was like, oh, we expect it from Tom, but like we didn't expect it from Raquel. Rachel, yeah. Um, and now it's the same thing. Like we expect this from Austin, but we mm-hmm. wouldn't expect it from, from Taylor. Taylor. Yeah, yeah, and Taylor is like public enemy number one. At least according to Olivia's uh, answer on uh, Watch What Happens Live, it I feels mean, like that. I she's like she's been also, excommunicated. I think she's also angry at Austin. Yeah. But I hope so. like even in just like public reception to this, I feel like mm-hmm. it's a lot worse on Taylor. Yeah. She's not doing herself any favors, I have to say. Yeah. Like, you know, her outburst at Madison's like wedding party. Yes. Like screaming at craig mm-hmm. like accusing Paige of cheating on him which was yeah. just like a baseless rumor like she's definitely yeah. making it a little hard for her to, like for you to root for her yeah um and and i do think what she did was messed up and i think the the worst part for of it sure. is that she's just blatantly lying to olivia's face yeah like i think olivia's the only like sympathetic character in this like I square so. i think so <laughs> i think I, I think that's definitely true especially because like all the other like characters are really just like they're poking the bear essentially for fun, right? Like Craig, uh, Whitney, this new guy, whatever his name is, JP, oh my God, TJ, PJ, TJ. Um, like we like, have to talk about TJ later. Uh, yeah, I don't even <laughs> want to so get many into it. On this man. So don't even want to <laughs> get. <laughs> don't even want to give him the time of day. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so like I feel like they're all just like kind of doing this because they like want to get the answer out there. They're like poking it, poking it for like the information to come out. And like Olivia is like the person that's just kind of like sitting there, like waiting for the aftermath of what this is gonna be like. Um, when like her life yeah. is kind of like turned upside down. Um, I feel like she's taking so much heat online that I like really don't understand. A lot of people think that really? this is totally fake um huh. and that she's like being really possessive over him um and and again it's just like 
she's entitled to whatever opinions or like feelings she has about that relationship like yeah no matter how long or short it was or anything like that like I don't think this is a fake storyline like it doesn't strike me that way no I don't think so if anything like the fact that they're keeping it so tight-lipped like definitely makes me feel like it's like a real storyline like the difference between this and then like the Whitney and Naomi makeout last (laughs) year come on (laughs) that's true also like we've never seen Shep this rattled yeah and like I don't feel like Shep is a good actor no I don't Um, think so he's not (laughs) he's not media trained at all like we've seen him on Watch What Happens Live like (laughs) Shep I don't remember him on Watch What Happens Live he was always on it the other night but then yeah he's been on it a few times I just don't think he's very good at like this right he's like, like, like um, he's, tom he's okay. schwartz yeah even tom well yeah but yeah i don't think he's as bad as tom schwartz <laughs> i was gonna say oh my god is he worse than <laughs> no he's, but i just don't think that he like you know he doesn't really know how to like work kind of like work the angles and like do the things to be able, i don't know to like create storyline and do that that's a craig's job craig is very good at doing that um yeah. And Shep is just a good reality TV star for other reasons. True. Craig but. is loving that he is not the center of a scandal oh, yeah. oh, or he really like is. Of, of the crazy storyline. Yeah. <laughs> and I don't understand how Craig always gets away with this because like if he were my best friend and he was doing this to me right now, I would be like so upset. <laughs> <laughs> like, dude, just shut it down. Let's stop speculating. Stop going over to Shep and like, you know, saying, hey, oh, yeah. I don't know. Do you think this is kind of weird? I think this is kind of weird. He's like, poking. But the, the weird thing with all those boys, though, and their friendship is that they like, like, they seemingly kind of hate each other. <laughs> yeah, they do. <laughs> like, they're all like, really angry. Like, they've all like, been so angry at each other at one yeah. point or another. Like, Craig and Shep were like, butting heads like crazy for so many seasons. Yes. And, and now he's like, I don't know it's so strange (laughs) yeah well and that's just it like it like it's always like they have these kind of like big outbursts or these disagreements or whatever and then they just go back to being friends because they all just like hang out with each other all of the time like I'm sure that Austin and Craig are still biffles even though like this is kind of like happening and this is what's unfolded yeah there's just there's no repercussions like it's on it's for reality tv go for it whatever I don't care if you blow up my life (laughs) no it's true I mean like I am kind of here for watching you know them squirm a little bit like yeah. both Shep and Austin because I feel yeah. like they always just get away unscathed like well and that's saying. just it and that's just <laughs> it right like it, it doesn't even matter for Austin that Craig is doing this because he knows that he's still gonna get to be best buddies with these guys and it's just unfortunate that we know that Taylor and Olivia don't get to go back to that place um which yeah. is really unfortunate I just feel like there's like no good female friendships on this show anymore I don't no. like mm-hmm. Vanita and Madison say that they're friends again but uh, I don't know I just it's not enough to carry a storyline no and we're just not invested as much in them yeah. like I don't feel like you know as much about their life like no. I don't know it's not and then they replaced all the women with those three new three dudes. random dudes I know <laughs> it kills me it kills me every time <laughs> yeah I mean um this is a little bit off topic but reality bites was mentioning something too that it's like I feel like they're like this season is missing kind of like good anchors mm. like they're kind of trying to anchor it around Taylor and Olivia but it's like not yeah quite strong enough in yeah. personality in, yes. in that type of way yeah um it feels like I guess it's mainly just around the the boys I guess Mm -hmm. but like yeah you do really miss the presence of like Catherine and of Cam yeah and you know Chelsea Naomi like all those yeah yeah it's true it feels like we were we're really having a departure away from the original kind of like anecdote or what no antidote anecdote what am I thinking of Anyways, (laughs) Anyways, <laughs> formula <laughs> for for, uh, for Southern Charm. Um, and yeah, there's just, it's a little bit too much of a departure. And I think that they kind of thought that by bringing on these like three boys onto the show, I think one of them's gay, but I guess the other, I think the other two are straight. I guess maybe they thought that there'd be like more like opportunities for like mingling with like the single women of the cast. Um, even then it's only Livia and Taylor at this point that are single um, yeah. because Vanita has a boyfriend Leva's married and Madison's married so yeah I don't I don't I don't know I don't know what they were thinking in the whole casting process um but you're right I think that there's there's they're lucky that they have this like new central story of the Austin Taylor alleged make out whatever hookup but there's no like there's nothing concrete holding down the storyline or holding down the like 
the cast it feels like right. it's just too random and it's also like it's only on the fourth episode and we're already like getting pretty far in this story which I, yeah. I like it's it's fast mm-hmm. um, because it did end up being outed kind of like yes. as they were filming which is like really lucky yeah but yeah like is this gonna last the whole season like yeah like like, what else is there after this we have to like or is this gonna continue to drag on what was I feel like there was something else like that that we watched where it just like ended up like dragging on the entire season oh actually no it's southern it's it's a summer house I don't know if we want to go down that it was like the COVID season of summer house when the Hannah uh and I think we were talking about this actually the Hannah uh and Kyle fight from the COVID season um like Carl like you know spoiler alert Carl's uh, brother passes away and this like weird fight between Kyle and Hannah that kind of like started off at the beginning of the season like just like extends the entire length of the season and it made it such a bad season yeah of Summer House it's like basically unwatchable yeah yeah maybe (laughs) <laughs> yeah <laughs> I feel like, like last season was at least a little bit better with like the Danielle yeah. and Lindsay fight because at least like we kind of like had the anticipation of like when's this fight gonna start because we didn't know and then at least like the second half was like kind of dedicated to the fight and we were all right. kind of like even though we all had like different like takes on like how we felt about it um it was at least a little bit more dynamic than just yeah. kind of like an extended season of like this is the drama for, that's supposed to carry us through 14 episodes. It feels like a even like Salt Lake City like does that kind of right. There's just like there's not enough like they are there. Yeah. If that makes yeah. sense. No, totally. Uh, but that being said, I am liking it so far for sure. Yeah. yeah. Um and and you know actually the last maybe probably the last similarity that we'll talk about <laughs> is actually that both of these shows mm-hmm. didn't have a great season last season. Mm, um, oh that's a very good and point and then there was like this crazy scandal that broke yeah. out and like yeah. breathed kind of like new life into it and mm-hmm. i'm pretty sure that's what's happening with beverly hills too judging from the new trailer that actually looks yeah. good actually looks really good i'm actually very excited like, for beverly hills now <laughs> what is in the water at bravo right? this year <laughs> <laughs> i think well i don't know i think maybe is it like is it covid relationships is that's it like true. like have have we all just kind of like come out of like this thing and now we're like reassessing our lives and like thinking about like what we want to happen and like it's just causing like these big chaotic like life events in our lives and it's just happening across the bravo sphere as well i don't know <laughs> i yeah, think it's very I possible mean, it could be so yeah to sum it up <laughs> we're in a couple different directions there <laughs> um Always. essentially there are a lot of similarities between scandal and you know what we're seeing play out in southern charm like specifically that like this news breaks during a season in some capacity the two mm-hmm. people involved lie to kind of like everyone around them about yeah. it um and then it lets us kind of like pick up on things as the the season's kind of coming out um also like the main one is really like Taylor and Raquel being like very similar in Mm -hmm. nature I think and just kind of being like lost and like downplaying their relation like the relationships that they kind of like displaced infiltrated yeah (laughs) but you know going on some differences regarding Mm -hmm. Southern Charm and the Scandival VPR I think the biggest one that we talked about a little bit earlier is Mm -hmm. just the there's no clear victim and villain I think as much yeah as there was in Scandival yeah, like nobody's walking around with like a team uh Shep or a team yeah. Olivia t shirt or like any of that stuff. Like it's definitely a very different experience. Um and even Sandoval, like Sandoval is like, you know, he's been he's now been labeled everything under the sun, um, including narcissist and psychopath. Um, and I don't think that like while it's you know not a great season for Austin and it's not a great look, like I think that like the way that the tide really turned on Sandoval um, and like a lot of people kind of like saw him finally for like who he really is or who I really believe that he is. Um, don't don't want to seem too biased, but I'm pretty biased. <laughs> um, you know, like I think that, that that's a clear difference as well is that like Sandoval is just like, he fully went villain. Everybody really turned on him. And like, I don't think anybody cares that much about Austin in this situation that's it too like I was just wondering like why 
we are so invested in Scandival and like mm-hmm. I can't speak for everyone but I know myself I'm definitely not as invested in mm-hmm. you know this whole s- scandal yeah I do wonder if Scandival hadn't happened if this would have felt like a bigger deal I don't know maybe I, th- I think it's possible um but yeah I think that like Scandival just like really captured something within us right like it really <laughs> like it, it enraged us like it really we we're like ready feel- to go to war for yeah, like, it, like really made us feel things right like because people like knew that situation and like knew what that was like and like you know it, it was easy to kind of grasp whereas like as we've said a bunch of times too like the situation is a lot more murky like mm-hmm. yeah there's people that we feel bad for and like, you know, everybody's coming into it with like their own experiences, but it is still technically a little murky because everybody was kind of more or less pretty single while this was happening. Yeah, it's, that's true. You know, like it's not great, you know, but at the same time, who are we to say? Unfortunately, yeah. things get a little bit messy when you're having relationships and when you're in such a tight knit friend group too, that like might have that like a little bit of like a cross contamination and like whatnot going on. Yeah. Very- Beverly Hills, 90210, everybody dates one and each other. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. Like I feel like with VPR, it was a lot more like black and white. I think it's mm-hmm. also like it was a relationship that we had literally seen unfold over, yes. you know, nine years. Yeah, like- it's true. I feel like we really felt like invested in this relationship. Mm-hmm. Um, Ariana literally did nothing wrong. Like there, yeah. Ariana was like, it's also been said she's kind of like a sympathetic victim. She's a person mm-hmm. you want to rally around. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. Not that, you know, Olivia isn't, but no. like we just really got drawn into it. We've seen a lot of it. I think like we talked about earlier, there was confusion around like the relationship with Olivia and Austin. Mm -hmm. Um, It's just like, it doesn't have as much, you know, like it's not going to go on CNN the way that, you know, the show just did. Yeah, exactly. They're not going to get, maybe they'll get nominated for an Emmy. Who knows? But like, (laughs) like, like Scandival like burst the Bravo bubble. Like it went, it it went went went, beyond. It went massive. It was crazy. Um, And, and we also then saw like, you know, Tom Sandoval in the episodes, planting his breadcrumbs, getting ready to break up with Ariana. And he didn't know that we were going to watch that. Yeah. knowing that he had had this affair right, right exactly like, and we've talked about this a lot of times but like it was just such a rare moment as well that this happened to break while we're watching the season so yeah. we're literally experiencing two different yeah. versions of the season because yeah. it didn't play out yet so we're seeing them get caught in lies yeah um whereas with you know this southern charm one mm-hmm. it's you know it got brought up on the first episode like the whole season is grounded in this scandal yeah and we are gonna see it play out but we're not gonna watch it being like oh see she's lying here right yeah um, exactly oh this is austin letting us know that we don't we shouldn't like olivia like there's none of that like yeah like we're seeing them scramble more i think yeah. i think that's actually a really mm. big difference that i literally just thought about right now oh i, I like is that like, is like you're see, which is kind of interesting right like you're seeing austin mm-hmm. you're seeing his wheels just <laughs> turn when like confronted with anything <laughs> yeah oh no why did whitney plow me with this much alcohol now i can't think of my a good enough lie <laughs> they seemed so drunk when they were just yeah. sitting there talking to each other champagne before everyone dangerous. else came. Oh God, Sh- like you I'm just you don't even know how hard it's gonna hit you <laughs> it's the bubbles it's the sugar it's everything yeah oh man that was a bad situation for us that was a bad situation for austin i do also wonder and i hope that this isn't like too controversial of opinion but i do also wonder if part of the reason why we don't have as much of a problem with the potential possibility of an austin taylor hookup is because watching last season we did kind of see a good connection to them. And I and maybe some of us were thinking maybe they should be in a relationship together. Maybe these are the two people that are supposed to be together. And she's just unfortunately with Shep and he's with Olivia. And like, maybe they're like star-crossed lovers or something. Like, um, I don't know if we feel that way now, but. <laughs> it's true. I really, I, we might've even said it. Like I, I remember for some reason, this seed stands out in my mind when mm-hmm. uh, Taylor and Austin were like shoes shopping for yes, like a yes. trip they were going on. And yeah. Austin was basically like, like, Shep treats you so badly and yeah. it's so hard to watch. And like, they yeah. do, they have, they do have a really sweet connection. They do. Um, they have, like, it Olivia's, feels like they have chemistry. Like, yeah. But Olivia's even said, she's like, I 
I like was happy that they were friends like Mm -hmm. I I, like supported their friendship it seemed like brother sisterly yeah oops (laughs) yeah (laughs) yeah well and even watching like the reunion when like uh Taylor is obviously like so overcome with emotions and you know dealing with all of this Shep stuff uh post breakup you know Austin's the one that's there to comfort her um and even watching like the early episodes of this season uh with the the two of them kind of like in their you know watching their like little witty repartee their back and forth their little bantery moments like you do kind of get the sense that maybe they could be if they were in a different t- circumstance this could be the right place the right time you know maybe it would have worked out for the two of them but obviously that's not the case um and but it's unfortunate that other people got hurt I guess along the way yeah I mean the timeline is murky like yes. you know even when taylor was recount like was basically saying how she doesn't think she's in the wrong because they were broken up mm-hmm. her and Shep were only broken up for two months yeah. and like can you imagine and i'm not like a Shep fan <laughs> like i have to preface but, like <laughs> you know if you come out of a two and a half year relationship and then two months after your breakup your mm-hmm. ex is like going to your best friend and yeah being, like, maybe maybe like, i love gonna- you <laughs> yeah maybe i love you Shep. <laughs> <laughs> land in throwback uh, yeah if you haven't seen our wear and they now episode could just quick plug there check it check it out <laughs> <laughs> like yeah like that would suck so like it sucks on Shep's part it sucks mm-hmm. on Olivia's part because Olivia probably shared you know a lot with Taylor about this relationship yeah, yeah. um and apparently Taylor is even the one who like tr- told her she should give Austin another chance uh, which is like really weird, really so. weird I know I think the timeline is like a lot of what's wrong with the situation yeah and just not being honest like if it, you know I may I don't know if it would have been better but like had Olivia and Taylor had a conversation when Taylor was first contemplating like well if you're not gonna date him maybe I will like maybe that would make things better I don't know hopefully not like that <laughs> well you know <laughs> Hey, you mind? Hey, you're using this. Can I take it? Do you mind? With this? <laughs> you're, over, you're you're done with this, right? I can take it. <laughs> you know, something like that. On. Something like that. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I don't know. Maybe maybe it would have at least been a little bit better. And like, obviously, like Shep, I think has even said in this in most recent episode that he d- wouldn't have cared if Austin had just been honest, right? Like, yeah, I don't allegedly. think that's true. But no. like. Yeah, I mean, but that's it. It's it's the lying that I think makes it so much worse. It's just mm-hmm. like the lying to or the bad lying. The like bad just lying. Co- commit to the bit if you're gonna lie about well, it. Like I mean, Taylor go to committing. the grave. <laughs> Taylor's going real far. Yeah, and Austin is just Austin. phoning it in. As so bad. Yeah, so bad. Just can't do anything about it. Oh man. Uh, oh. Yeah, it's it's just I don't know. The other thing too is like the level of de- betrayal is is a lot deeper, I think, in mm. in Scandal, right? Like there's mm. the relationship of like nine years. Um, yeah, yeah, I can see that. Yeah, and well, and that's just it. Like it, it it's different too because like if ta- like Taylor's technically the one that was in the long term relationship, like the committed long term relationship with Shep, so she's already felt her betrayal from him. And so, like, I don't know if that just, like, messed with her head or what, but sure now... it did. Yeah. I can't imagine that it didn't. And I yeah. also think that, like, she probably was, like, actually another similarity I just thought about. <laughs> her, like, Raquel, I think they get a lot of validation from men as well, mm. especially when they're, like, in this kind of situation where being cheated on, I think, really messes with you. And, like, yeah. you know, Austin was there. Yeah he was nice he was tall I've heard he's very tall in real life like he feels very tall and that probably makes him feel more attractive (laughs) but yeah and uh, like I still and like and Taylor's really rubbing me the wrong way this season too Mm -hmm. like and it's so frustrating because like I feel like I have like you almost have like a bias of just remembering some like people in these shows by like whatever you're seeing currently but I do know I liked her her first few seasons I yeah like she really like took Shep as he was and he yeah. didn't really try to change him and they were very playful and fun and like you know she had her own career and like I I do remember liking her yeah this season it's just like girls well, filing. Yeah. 
yeah and that's just it like and we, we did see him like be like a little bit like borderline abusive to her like on the last in the last season um he, like, especially an idiot when she like dropped the egg the, in, like, yeah their, exactly like, race like, or whatever something so n- n- like nothing like not worth anything and no reason to ever lash out at a partner because of that um and then obviously to then be getting onto like apps and like you know doing things that you're not supposed to do and yeah yeah like i can't imagine the level of hurt that you would feel from yeah. that yeah but still it's yeah like taylor taylor wouldn't like it if olivia was the one going around potentially having maybe hooked up with shep thinking maybe you and i are supposed to be life partners like let me go talk to my mom and dad about it and you go talk to your mom and dad about it and we'll compare yeah. notes but later that's it. it's, uh, oh my gosh i found another i'm thinking of all these similarities <laughs> or past the similarity section but we also know unfortunately you know um oh my gosh I just like mixed up everyone's heads in my mind Uh, Olivia yeah we know that Olivia's brother passed away around Mm -hmm. this time I don't think it happened yet but we're going to see it which is just like extremely devastating yeah um and you know with with Scandaval, Ariana had lost her grandmother and her oh dog my God. really, really You're around so that same time. Right. Oh my God, that is so crazy. Right? So that is both, so weird. I know. I just thought about that. So they're Ugh. both dealing with grief um, yeah. at the same at the same time as they're going through this. And yeah. Um, I actually went back and listened to Sheena's podcast where she interviewed Olivia. Yeah. Uh, this was during Scandal again, so I didn't even <laughs> listen to the podcast when it came out. <laughs> but I went back and listened now. Um, but yeah, Olivia was saying that like a lot of the season she's just kind of like in a, a, a grief phase. Yeah, I'm sure. She oh my god. Like, would kind of like black out and not even know what she filmed. And and it seemed that she was also frustrated with uh Austin and Taylor because I guess what we're gonna see later is that they just she she's like the fact that they even thought I would like be invested or care about this when I was going through that type of grief is just like so selfish of them yeah and I can see that like I can see them both just like only wanting to talk about this yeah and just being so engulfed in this yeah because it's all about them and like th- that like that I think is probably the part of the problem with the fact that they've had this conversation and they've entertained this relationship is because they clearly were really just thinking about the two of them and the, the, their, own, their own selves um and not kind of like the bigger implications that this might have with like their friend group or their friendships or whatever um yeah yeah that's unfortunate that's uh yeah it's gonna it feels like it's gonna be a bit of a rough season season for olivia um and i'm really surprised to hear that she's getting like hate online at all for any of this because like she's really just like not a victim in all this i feel like she's just like existing she's she's literally just literally literally just existing and like responding to the information as it's coming to her and now she has to like deal with it well, even like in this episode, like even after she finds out from Taylor, like what had what had happened, she still goes to support her at this like yeah. launch event. And Madison is like, she is like the nicest woman in America. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she does seem very nice. Maybe she'll get a season, a friend next season. That would be a nice little balance. Maybe so the group is that she, of course, she's like relatively new to Charleston. Mm-hmm. so maybe she can't have a friend <laughs> like not not like <laughs> that she doesn't have a friend but like you know um yeah, yeah i don't know we need to rectify that somehow we need to like bring one of her friends from la to charleston have her join the cast and then maybe <laughs> it'll feel a little bit more balanced <laughs> yeah no she oh. seems like she seems really sweet her yeah. and ariana should be friends <laughs> yeah i bet they would be friends yeah. though one thing okay i'm good i keep on going back to this watch what happens live appearance but one thing that i thought was crazy in this watch what happens live appearance was that olivia they did this like little game because like that's what they always do on the show um and where like Shep and Olivia had to swipe right or swipe left on like different Bravo liberties and Olivia swiped right on uh Schwartz I knew I was gonna say don't say Schwartz (laughs) (laughs) I know and I was just like Olivia have you not watched the tv show like come on he's disgusting (laughs) do not swipe right on this man maybe this is the problem <laughs> because if you liked austin and you like schwartz maybe there's like a bit of a theme here <laughs> of like a slightly unreliable man child like boys in the bravo world and <laughs> we need to fix this for you <laughs> oh my gosh. 
unacceptable yeah i hope that doesn't happen in bravo (laughs) yeah well and that's just it andy is like totally teeing it up as if he's gonna like set up all these relationships at bravo Uh, come on i mean they have a pretty decent track record (laughs) (laughs) yeah that's true i mean ashley darby and uh luke Luke. what's his last name gulb gulbrinson no idea anyways (laughs) g luke g (laughs) uh Uh, yeah (laughs) anyway uh let us know if you guys have any similarities or differences that you were kind of like feeling or if you're just like how you're responding to this like scandal in general right like how you kind of feel about this whole Whitney no Whitney oh my god Austin Olivia Taylor Shep situation yeah too many names too many people involved in this like little love triangle yeah well (laughs) Uh, I mean, like it's it's still early on. I'm al- I'm always almost like scared to say opinions too early because yeah. you could just really just eat your words. It's totally fair that we did with Raquel. We're like, I love her. <laughs> yeah. She's so great. Good season for her. You know, I think I think there's something really happening here. <laughs> like main character energy. Yeah, so sweet. Good for you, girl. I feel yeah. for you. Yeah. No, burn the tapes. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> just like delete those episodes. <laughs> Cross them out. They don't exist. Um, but um, um, the really quickly, I wanted to talk to you just about like our thoughts on the season so far, um, yeah. which we did cover a little bit. Um, I am liking the way that it's going, um, mm-hmm. you know, thanks to the scandal. But I really <laughs> want to talk to you about JT. So just really quickly. Uh, okay. Um, <laughs> he's just like, Okay, I can acknowledge that I think he is probably doing well for television that he's like really yes. just throwing grenades and then like running yes. away and he's, he knew how this worked going yeah. into it yes he's like forcing Shep and Austin to confront things yeah it did feel like a like it came on very strong like it came on like a little bit produced because oh, yeah. it was just so like oh my oh, god yeah. did you <laughs> it was giving ken actually come to think about it another similarity is that both of these like sleepovers got outed and then they tried to lie about them yes <laughs> no that's actually a really good point <laughs> ah <laughs> but yeah jt just being like oh like i can't believe you had the sleepover <laughs> well i don't even think that there's a bed in taylor in austin's guest room <laughs> like yeah when like he's uh, actually just like, i guess that wasn't Olivia. that wasn't jt but still <laughs> tj yeah, so what is his name I jt jt but maybe it's okay. tj oh gosh i don't know um but i just like i really <laughs> the scene where he's on the phone with his mummy <laughs> oh that was the worst oh my god that was so bad <laughs> And, like, I'm all for, you know, like, men having good relationships with the, their mom. I think, totally. like, the way the way that a man treats his mom is yes. very important. Yes. But Agreed. the mummy? Yeah, the like, mummy was... Mummy, yeah. I wish I was at home having some mummy snacks. <laughs> <laughs> and he called his cat his girlfriend or something. <laughs> yeah, and he just, like, wanted to, like, be, like, in the exact same position that, like, the Pomeranian or whatever the dog was. <laughs> Oh my god, yeah, that was very, very strange. Um, I, I don't know, like, I get that it's reality TV, but maybe you don't need to be that real. Like, there's a camera in front of you, maybe just be be a little less real. <laughs> yeah, that was, oh my god, that was pretty cringe. Yeah. And then in the episode today, he was, like, wearing a backwards cap, and, like, yeah. the first thing I thought about was, like, you know in Friends when Joey is trying to audition for, like, a teenager, and he's, like, sup uh, with the sets up, <laughs> like, because he looks a lot older. Yeah. But then, like, he had this, ba- I don't know, it was just, yeah, like, weird was vibes. Weird. I don't what, know what's what, happening. What do you do with that backpack? Yeah. Even that, and I'm sorry, like, I know that some people like airbnb i know some people don't like airbnb i know that people on tiktok particularly hate airbnb but i just can't believe that this guy is like so publicly talking about how he airbnbs out all these places and it's just like i don't know if that's the way to win people over man like i don't know maybe it is i don't know (laughs) it very much screams like buying friends with money like yeah. especially the way he's like oh I just rented to these places in Europe and then Taylor came and hung out with me yeah. and I'm in love with her <laughs> right but also like what's the end goal here so like are you hoping that like we'll want to come stay at your Airbnb in Charleston because that'll be like our way to be like close to fame like what is what 100%. is this Ugh, this do people are people actually gonna want that like I don't know probably <laughs> really oh my god I hate it <laughs> kills me uh but yeah he's an interesting 
Napoleon complex man. He's definitely an interesting, interesting addition. I get it. He's doing a lot. He's doing his job. Usually I try to praise people for that, but it's 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 not it's coming off very inauthentic. It's actually very much coming off like um Monica on Southern um Salt, Salt Lake, Lake City. City. Yeah, where it's just like okay I get it you know how to do this but like we're also learning nothing about you other than like your businesses and like that you call your mom mummy <laughs> like and that you have diabetes like so just, we, we yeah. know three three weird things about you yeah um, well the diabetes no, is weird but the other, no, the other one no, yeah. weird. and I think it's I think it's nice that he showed that like mm-hmm. that he has diabetes but like yeah, yeah. that's great we, and we love awareness a little awareness bit awareness yeah. is important that's cool <laughs> we can get on board with that um yeah but yeah it's very strange and <laughs> very like strange. yeah he and he there's just like a really creepy air about him like yeah the way that he is with taylor yeah and i feel like he's over like a little like overexposed <laughs> like it's just too <laughs> much too soon coming on like way too strong with this whole like persona of just like getting into the thick of it um and i realized we like know by contrast like very little about the other two new guys Dude, but I fe- feel like that's that's playing like to their favor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Like, like the like not the one who's dating Olivia. Yeah, but the other one like is he lit? Is he a main cast member? Because like he's in the photos. He's in the photo. He's in like it, we, he he showed up to like w- two events. Let's check Wikipedia. Let's see what it says. <laughs> <laughs> Wikipedia will let us know. <laughs> the the Rod who's dating Olivia does seem sweet, and he seems nice so far. Yeah. Oh no. So they are okay. So it's. Rod, Rodrigo, and then Jarrett Thomas, who I think must be JT. JT. Okay. Cool. And they're all main cast members. That's also, can wild. you can you believe that I was able to pull up that Wikipedia that fast? <laughs> I it, it like, was it was tab. it was basically <laughs> saved. <laughs> but uh, okay, no, I can't, they how do they come in new? main character main char- that like, right like, that never happens i feel like all of the women no. who came on always had to be a b cast member first yes. and they yeah. served so much more exactly like vanita vanita was a friend of first like uh, chelsea was a friend of chelsea, first Catherine, Ka- Catherine. yeah exactly like it just doesn't make any sense even naomi was friend of for a long time and she and, like, like served yeah. a lot of plot and like madison was friend of too like it's just it's too much it's too much. I don't like it. Yeah, that upsets me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, no, I'm excited yeah. to, to continue to see. There will yeah. probably be more similarities and differences is that we're going to learn about. As time goes on. You know, Scandaval. Yeah. You know what else is maybe a reason this didn't take off as much is because it didn't what? have a name like Scandaval. Well, that's just it. It doesn't like how, even have a name. How, how can you be is a that? real scandal? <laughs> right. How can we put you on a t-shirt if we don't yeah. know to call you? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> How are we going to make all this merch if we don't know what this is? Like, you know, we can't even succinctly say it like ourselves. <laughs> like, there's there's no easy way to write this down. Like, no, exactly. Uh, yeah, it's too complicated. We it's can't way too talk complicated. about it in a single sentence. No, exactly. It's not not clickbaity enough. <laughs> it is what it is. It's at least it's playing out. It's going to be good. I think it's going to be a good season overall. Um, and I just hope that they make a couple little course corrections for next year. Yeah, I'll say. <laughs> bring back the ladies bring back some more <laughs> ladies yeah that's what we want you're the barbie come on guys <laughs> yeah thanks again for helping us hit um a thousand subscribers and now we need a new goal ten thousand let's 10, go ten thousand oh my god no we could never that's way too high <laughs> we gotta dream big guys. okay all right ten thousand <laughs> it is 